I do think the purest of the pure, like they, they do like traditional bow hunting. But I also think in the same way, like people when they shoot a when they shoot a 150 inch buck with a trad bow, those guys are not just like hushing hushing. They're they're like they won't check even this it. out. Yeah. Well, it becomes a tool to share that and brag about it. It also is a tool to help you find it. Just to like have that. Right. Like to relive the, the hunt. Yeah. Like those moments. I mean, there's just not a lot of them, especially with a trad. <laughs> There is greatness in you. <laughs> Just, you guys sitting with bucks over your shoulders. <laughs> oh, that'd be a beautiful thing. Be you TikTok too worthy. can shoot super average Michigan deer. <laughs> <laughs> with dedication and preparation, you too can shoot super average deer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah oh yeah i know i know what i wanted to share right, now so so let's um ready ready break all right so welcome back everybody to another painted arrow podcast we got a good one for you today we're going to be sharing with you some some new new product that new new that new <laughs> uh we're going to be sharing with you some really new and innovative things that we've been working on and i'm i'm personally really excited for this to kind of do like the deep dive um if you were to look at this you know like a like a 30 second ad wouldn't even touch the surface of like some of these products a 10 minute youtube video wouldn't really touch a lot of what i like i want to dive deep into the products why we designed how we designed what they're intended for and um I don't know. I really do enjoy gear. So I know a lot of people out there, this is like the time of year where, um, you know, it's kind of post late season. A lot of people start kind of transitioning to gear, watching gear reviews, like um, getting getting their their setups, kind of jotting notes down of like, what are the things that I want to improve for next year? That's what I personally do. I don't know if I'm the only one, but um, anyway, we're going to we're going to talk gear but i wanted to share a story um with everybody this is something that i've been working on the last couple weeks at my house um in our basement we actually did like a painting job um and there's this drop ceiling okay this has really nothing to do this has nothing to do with the actual meat of the potatoes here the the actual (laughs) podcast but this (laughs) i got myself into a project like um Mm. Like one of those projects where like you just randomly open a can of worms and you don't realize how big the can of worms was and you're like, well, now we got to do it. Yeah. Like one of those deals. I looked at this and I'm like, it's going to be really easy. We're going to do this, 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 and that'll be done, you know? And my Lord, was I wrong. So there's a drop ceiling in the basement. As many of you know, the house that I'm currently living at, it's, it's a newer place for me. And the drop ceiling with the square ceiling tiles, the guy who I bought it from took a roller, a paint roller, and rolled the ceiling and the actual the track. channeling track that, ex- that holds the squares, just painted it like a dark color. I don't know if that was trending at one point. I don't know. And it was like a bronze or something, wasn't it? It was like a horrible color. It was just like it had Vomit. good bones, but like... If it had been white, it'd be great because the whole basement would be lit. It'd be, feel like bright in the basement. So I'm like, yeah, we'll pop the ceiling tiles out. We'll paint the channel, put in the new white ceiling tile squares, and it'll brighten up the room in a big way, right? Seems pretty pretty straightforward. Like, yeah, pretty easy. So I start popping these ceiling tiles out, and I get 10 in, there's dust everywhere, right? Like you can imagine, like there's just dust everywhere and you, you, you pull them out and there's bugs from 10 years coming out on the floor. So it's like yeah. 10, I'm 10 squares in and it's a huge mess. And I, I knew it was going to be like dusty and whatever. I had like a dust mask on, but I'm starting to look at these, these squares and like the, the paint got underneath the square 
yeah. like channeling and the squares. So like I'm popping these ceiling tiles out and there's like jagged paint sticking. Oh, I know exactly what you're dealing with. Off. And I'm like, oh no. Like I was 10 in and I'm like, oh, I'm already too far to put them back in because it looks horrible if you put the squares back in. And so what I had to do, I mean, this is a pretty big area, like a pretty big area. I had to pull all these tiles out, take a Stanley utility knife and like carve all the paint out on the edges to get it square and then go up through it on a ladder and scrape it flat and get the paint that was off caked. The top side. Cause if you put a new square in, it was like all off, off level. So I'm into this like way longer than I anticipated. Like, <laughs> way like way in like on a stupid project mm -hmm. and i'm um, oh, i got really far yesterday we got it all scraped out got it all swept and we're actually starting the painting but man i just i wanted to share my misery with with you and the listeners like i just got into it i mean i'm i'm and that's way one of those ones that by starting it and then you realize it's a bigger project than you thought but now it's this eyesore and you can't just leave it like that exactly. so it's like it's just looming over you, and it's just so much. And I had a window of time that I wanted to get it done for my wife before I, you know, start traveling. For and sure. that, so, that, yeah. that. so anyway, that has nothing to do with today. But I just wanted to share that because that was kind of what I was handling yesterday, and it was just, man, it was wild. <laughs> wild. Okay, so we're going to talk about new product. And... I don't know which one I want to start with here. I think we're going to start with this guy. Really? I do. I, I want to save the best for the last because I'm, I'm a, I want to keep the listeners. Uh, the, I think the second one is more impressive, and I'll get there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what I'm holding in my hand right here, if you guys are watching on Spotify or maybe on YouTube, is this is our brand new Spankity, Spankity. F H one fluid head. And FH stands for fluid head. fluid head. And this is something that I've been really wanting to come out with, with a fluid head under the Painted Arrow brand for quite a while. Um, there are there are a lot to, of these to choose from on the market, I would say. Mm -hmm. But there's like a couple of key features. I, I love glassing. I've, I've, I've said this on some of other, other reviews. Um, we've, we've done some YouTube videos on glassing and... I know you like glassing too. You like binoculars. Like I, at one point, I think I had like five pair of binoculars, and I've sold some off since. Um, but like glassing is a huge piece of hunting, whether you're in the Midwest, whether you're up in Canada, whether you're in, you know, West. Montana, South Dakota, whatever. It's a huge piece of hunting, and you know, I got here also. If you're looking and if you can see this, this is a tripod. I just have kind of put flat that we're going to just do some demonstrations on but the actual the actual head that you put on your tripod is a very important piece when it you know when it comes to mounting a pair of binoculars when it comes to mounting a spotting scope um, and then there's a bunch of different attachments that we're going to get into in detail um, that you can also attach but so this this FH1 fluid head, I'm just going to start kind of going through the specs, yeah. and please hit me with if I'm missing something, Dev. Mm -hmm. But um, one thing that is really important when you talk about a fluid head is overall weight. Yeah. Like, that sticks out to me, number one, is, like, overall weight. Like, you're not wanting to carry something, in the you know, deep into the backcountry or, you know, up a mountain if it's going to be three pounds. Like, that doesn't even make sense. Mm hmm this right here is what I would identify and, and classify as a micro ultralight fluid head. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. It's a micro and ultralight fluid head. This, this is, I think, nine ounces and some change when we weighed it the other day. It was like nine ounces and some change. So 16 ounces in a pound. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah. Am I right on? I think so, right? It's either yeah. 16 or 12. No, it's 16. It's got to be 16. Um, it's 16. Anyway, this is nine ounces and change. That's re that's relatively, like, really light when you start looking at other fluid heads on the market, okay? Well, I want to say, too, you mentioned there's a lot of other 
fluid heads in the market. It's it's a market where there's a lot to choose from. So we didn't, you know, we're not reinventing the wheel. We didn't do anything crazy with this. We just wanted to release a fluid head under the painted arrow name that was feature rich and accomplished what we're looking for in a fluid head with what we're primarily doing. Exactly. What a hunter so, would want. Exactly. So so this isn't like, you know, this isn't groundbreaking, you know, first, you know, first ever type stuff. Like this is, you know, this a lot of there are a lot of fluid heads that that are good. We just wanted to release one that was feature rich and did what we wanted to do with it and what we think other people who you know yeah. hunt with similar styles would do. Another uh, another common name for a fluid head is like a panning head. Yeah. Right. So you put this on a tripod and you have this handle and you can pan and you can tilt. So if I say panning head throughout this, it's the same same thing. Yeah. yeah. But you 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 just made an excellent point. Like the majority of all of the panning heads on the market are marketed to cinematographers. Yeah. Right. Like that's that's the market. Mm-hmm. So of the features that we're gonna go through. I'm I'm kind of I love that you said it, Dev. But this is this is something that a hunter would the the features on this are something that a hunter will need and is going to like for sure, right? That's very important. It's not, not you know like we said nothing groundbreaking. It's just it's it's stuff that we need as hunters and that you probably need as hunters. And so we wanted to make sure those features were included in the the yes. panning head we released. So back to the original point, the number one was the size and the weight. Okay micro ultra light like this is smaller than my fist this is smaller than a can of beer this is smaller than um a business card like this this actual body is very very small like it's probably how many inches like two and a half two Mm. and three quarter inches overall three inches maybe it's it's very small compact um the other thing about it that is amazing the spec that the the load that it can ha- carry right mm-hmm. so the load meaning the what you're weight of what you're mounting to it so a pair of binoculars a spotting scope right six point six pounds yeah I can't even think of a yeah that's, a piece that's... of glass on the market that weighs more than three pounds yes yeah, six point six pounds we put a pretty heavy duty camera on there certainly going to handle any of your your glass and you know your smartphone or really anything we've started i mean using some of these and some of the you know um and when trav's using like his big camera rig like yeah it mounts to it great and that'll lead me into the next kind of point of the mounting plate it's an arca swiss mounting plate receiver so basically if you're i didn't know what this was for a long time i heard people talking about it like you know Arca Swiss is a it's a universal mounting plate dimension and it's kind of like the standard. Yeah. Right? I, I don't know of any mounting, you know, any panning heads or tripod heads like that do not take a Arca Swiss plate. And that's that's very common in the USA and in Europe, I know for sure. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's some Swiss or German something that is different, but I just don't know of any personally. So I'm very comfortable saying that if you have any type of a mounting plate at your at your home, something that came with another, you know, accessory that you bought along the road in the last ten years, I'm willing to bet it's probably Arca Swiss. Um, that that being said, we have a plate, and I'm holding it in my hand. If you can see it, great. If you can't, you got to just just trust me on this. This comes with this head. This panning head, the fluid head, the FH1, and it mounts in there, and it has a quarter twenty thread on it, so you can mount any accessory that you have to our FH1, which is a really cool feature. So the painted arrow Mag Pro head. Yep. If you are a self filmer, if you are a saddle hunter, if you are into filming with your cell phone. And you want a very level, sturdy place to mount it, you can do that. Um, and if you can see, you can see I have that Mag Pro head mounted to it. And this is a really cool option, I'm telling you. There's really nothing like this where it's quite that turnkey where you can just like quickly take on and off. We're talking like less than 12 ounces all in when that's on there. 
and I just love I love the way that that works, looks, feels. Um, another piece that is really important that you understand that this this product comes with is a what we call a thread adapter. So in the bottom of the actual unit here, mm -hmm. this comes like threaded permanently from manufacturing with a 3 8 16 thread. That's slightly larger than a quarter 20. Quarter 20 is that, I, I would say, the standard um, in terms of lots of different accessories that are on the market. But typically a tripod, like this one in front of me, most all tripods, if you take that, um, you know, if it comes with like a, a fluid head or what, what do we call these heads here, Trav, that, that camera's mounted on? Is that a, yeah, that's a fluid head, isn't it? That is a ball mount head. Yes, thank you. Most tripods come with a ball mount head, and if you take that off, because you don't, you do not want to use a ball head for for glassing. I've tried it because I was cheap back in the day. Like it is not what you want. Take that off. This is going to be the standard on a tripod is a three eight sixteen thread. Yeah, and so this will thread right on. I'm going to do it right here. This will thread right on, really nice and easy. Um, but if you, like I said, if you are going to use this as an accessory to maybe our painted arrow arm, which is a quarter 20, all you have to do is take that head back off, break that loose, and then this thread adapter goes into the bottom of the actual unit, and now you can thread this on a quarter 20. Right. That's, that's included. It's a multi-tool. Why is that? Talk, like, talk about that. That's, that's a big deal. Yeah, it's, we, we don't know what tripod you have or what you want to mount your, your fluid head to. Um, some people will, will run it on a camera arm on something like our um, like our MagPro arm, arm or, or a tripod. I mean, the idea is that we don't know your use case and we need to know that it's going to be compatible for, most, for the most possible use cases. So that's why that's included. So I'm going to put this back on the tripod real quick here. Um, specifically speaking to binoculars, like this is, this is a passion of mine, truly. Like I look forward to going out of the state of Michigan multiple times a year, quite literally, because I love this style of hunting that requires binoculars. Bin yeah, I just love it. Yeah. I really do. Big like, binocular guy. I love, I love to glass. I love to like find a good glassing point and just like that's – like heavy glassing hunts are my favorite hunts. Mm -hmm. So like a late season elk hunt, you're up on a knob, you kind of get brushed in and you, you know, kind of where the, like there's nothing better. So I'm going to put this in here just really quick to show. This is a uh, bino adapter. There's a ton of different bino adapters on the market. I have a, I don't even remember what this one's called to be honest with you. Um, optics research, something like that. But basically for mounting your tripod, I'm sorry, mounting your binoculars. One of the features on this, uh, I'm going to just get it in front of me here. So if you're watching this, one really big feature on the FH1 is the adjustable handle or the panning handle. That's um, legit. It is very legit. It's very legit. I, I don't want to... I don't want to undersell this. Like, there's not a lot of tripod FH1. I'm sorry. There's not a lot of panning heads. Um, the FH1 the feature. being an exception that have that that option. A lot of the, I would say, cheaper. That's yeah. a fair word. They're just like bolted on. It's super easy to manufacture. It's a feature that gets left out. It's it does. more of more of like a you, you find it more on premium, higher you dollar units. Exactly. Thank you. But like for me. If you're watching, I'm going to move my mic for just a second, but when you're glassing, it's a huge, you want to like almost lean into the eye cups. Mm -hmm. And so when you lean into the eye cups, you can, you can, what I always have done is put the handle forward and it allows you to just very nicely kind of go up and down the mountainside and you have like this grid pattern. Whereas if, if your hand's back here by your, your chin, yeah, you're, it's, it's just, it's a little more awkward. This is it's nice. You can customize your setup. Um, and I, I just want to kind of demonstrate that so people can see that are, that are watching. So you can kind of get under it versus if it's back here, it's going to be like literally in your chin. Yeah. So picture glassing the mountainside. Anyway, 
I think that's just worth showing because that's a really big deal for me I personally when I when I would when I would go to look to buy one of these um there's something else that I was thinking of yeah the adjustable handle for for saddle hunters because that's a big that's a big customer base for us is like guys who want to sell film whitetails yeah right um you put this head the fh1 on a lot of different camera arms on the market sometimes you're going up a tree that is you know maybe it's a cedar tree and you just you're like you're dealing with the best that you have for the wind for the deer you're trying to hunt for the area that you're trying to go in maybe it's a super tough place to hunt so having that adjustability in the handle in a situation like that can make a world of difference. Yep. Just being able to kind of like fine tailor your, your setup. Yeah, there. exactly. So, um, one, one small design thing that I think is worth mentioning too, like the pan and tilt knobs. I'm going to take this off really quick. The spring loaded knobs. They're spring loaded. That's exactly right. So basically if you, if you, you know, you're tensioning, um, the pan or tilt knob, they're elongated so that you have a good amount of you know torque you can put on them but if you don't like where the final twist is and where right. that knob's sticking down you can simply pull it out turn it up and let go and it'll it'll get out of the way for you you can relocate the final twist exactly i hope, I hope that people listening That's understand sweet. that but it's just a nice little addition so it's spring loaded pull twist and you can put that knob wherever you want yeah so it's not sticking in your hand if you're trying to tighten and loosen up here that kind of thing so um final couple things about it there's a, a level right on the top underneath that arc of plate so you can see where absolute level is yep a nice like little a bubble, feature bubble level and uh yeah we're <laughs> we're offering a lifetime warranty with this product which is pretty cool yeah if you bend it break it snap it which is our our warranty you We'll give you a new one. We need some photos to show what happened, and we're going to give you a new one. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, it's as simple as that. These are on the website right now. We have hay in the barn, meaning we got we got inventory in stock, ready to ship. And what's the price point on this, Dev? I think it's at ninety bucks, isn't it? Ninety dollars yeah. is exactly right. Ninety dollars. Lifetime warranty. It's a pretty premium product for ninety bucks for what you're getting. Oh, there's there's nothing. This is the most affordable one on the market, hand, hands down. Yeah. Hands down, with all the features included. Wait, what did we say? Elite gear doesn't need to be overpriced. That's a fact. That's a fact. And it's got a dope painted arrow logo on the front. I mean, slick. Slick. Yeah. Everything you need. And I don't know. I'm, like I said, that's right in our line of sight there. I'm going to. Yeah put that to the side but in terms of just like i said the overall package i think that's a key to like i don't know there's lots of things that you kind of learn from buying gear and, and you just like ah uh, you know i don't i don't like this 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 and this and this but like i'm i'm telling you that i've done i've done my research with with binoculars and the accessories and the tripods and i've come to to learn that there's sometimes you can you can buy very specific gear for a very specific hunt. Yep. Um, a really good example would be like a 300 wind mag that's ultra light. Like that's a, you're going deep in the mountains for a really big animal. But typically if you're just going to go hunt off your, you know, your back 40 acres in the upper peninsula of Michigan, having a, like a feather light 300 wind mag is going to toss you. Like you wouldn't want that. You wouldn't want to choose that. Same thing with the tripod panning head for glassing, for self-filming, for putting a camera on maybe now and then, for putting our Mag Pro head on. Like, this is going to be able to do everything. It's yeah. got, it'll fit on any thread that you have. It's going to be able to mount to any Arca Swiss plate. It's got the adjustment. Everything that you'd want as a hunter, it's going to have. Yep. Trust me. I do. Okay. Did I, did, should I, should I, did I miss anything on that? No, I think you did it justice. I mean, this, this podcast is going to be a little sales mini, but we're just, you know, we've been working on some things and trying to bring new product to market. And this is a big one for us. I mean, we've, I think the big thing, like you said, is we've spent enough time playing with gear, buying gear, 
using gear to figure out what it is that we want and what guys who hunt like we hunt want. Um, and the, the, the main key there is that this, you know, a lot of our other products were innovating, trying to create something new that, that hasn't been done. This is, this is a product we're releasing under our brand, but there, there's nothing new or, or groundbreaking about it. We're just in making sure that it has features that we would want and we're marketing it to the hunter. Like yeah. you said, I mean, typically these these types of products or a, a panning head or a fluid head with those types of features typically is more um, marketed towards cinematographers and photography and traps. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's 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 just um, it's just different. There's one thing that I did want to one more thing I want to touch on on this head. I keep saying I keep saying head. I'm talking about the FH1 because it's fluid head yeah it's a fluid head it's just the, sh the short way of saying it um so the, we talk about the fluid head like if you can see what i'm doing i'm just i'm panning and tilting this tripod head right now it's got good action and it has like there's resistance to the pan and to the tilt yeah so when you tighten the pan and tilt tensioning knob it's going to make it more it's going to make it more difficult to do that as you as you kind of tighten it down. So one one thing that this this is a really big feature. I can't believe I almost missed this. So if you can see what I'm doing, I'm pushing the tilt all the way like facing if I was had a camera on, it's facing this the sky. If I let go, it's going to automatically level out. It returns. Return to level. Yeah. So like the fluid head inside of it, it's going to always return to level not on the on the panning part the panning is going to obviously stop where you where you put it but on the tilt when you push it down or up it's going to always re-level yeah so you know that's you know if you got three pounds mounted on it it's probably not going to return to level however it's a nice feature if you are um a lot of people don't know about this they really don't i had to learn about this myself i've never i've never seen anybody talk about this um, but if you have a pair of binoculars mounted on this, right, and you picture looking up kind of towards the top of the mountain and you let go and it's going to slowly, if you have it tensioned just right, it's going to slowly go down the hillside. And I've kind of found like it's it's not something I did at the beginning. You know, honestly, I, I didn't know what I felt about that feature, but like it's something that I've found that if you point up, it's going to automatically come down because of the weight and because of the auto level. You can like use it as a tool to quite literally glass down the exact slope of the mountain, mm -hmm. kind of return to the top, find the next pot, and just kind of like slowly let it. I don't know. I've I've never heard anybody talk about that. That's kind of cool. You know what I mean? I haven't either. I'm gonna mount it and show. So those that are looking can can actually see what I'm talking about. So again, I'm gonna go. See, this has got a lot of weight on it. So yeah, that one's going to be different. It's, it's going to return the other way. So if I'm going down towards the bottom of the mountain, yep. same same principle. I can loosen it real slowly. It's a little bit fast, but I'm showing it for the camera. It'll mm. automatically kind of go to where the weight level's out. Yep. And you can use that as you kind of use your product more, use the FH1, and like kind of use that to your favor. You can kind of just feather it. Loosen it, tighten it. So you, as you go... right. It'll it'll kind of just do it for you. Anyways, that's another feature I wanted to mention on it. It's uh it's it's very unique. So it's fluid. It's fluid and it's nice. I mean, it feels like it feels great. It really does. It just feels good. So okay, I think we're gonna move on. Move on from that. Let me get a little sip of coffee here. Oh, look at that. Trav confirmed. Sixteen ounces in a pound, buddy. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to get that confused with uh, 12 ounces in a beer and an Oberon. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of moving on, I said, so this is the last one. This might be somewhat of a shorter podcast. We'll find out here in the end. But what I'm holding in my hand now, so that, that, that was the FH1. We're moving on. Yep. FH1 fluid head, paintedairoutdoors.com, right $90, now. lifetime warranty, made for hunters. That's that's done. We're moving on. So what's in my hand now? Like I'm I'm very proud of this. You are. I'm very very proud of this. I, I have no. You, you, 
I'm going to brag about it just a little bit. Please. Um, we, ever since we set out, you know, set out to start Painted Arrow, we, we've always talked about making innovative hunting products. If I was a, when I was a kid, like I, I quite literally went to college and, and took specific classes to help me get a minor with, like, I wanted to understand how to do patent stuff. Mm-hmm. At, at, you know, at the time, I was watching a lot of Shark Tank. That was like something that I know you, Devin, and I would always kind of bonded over. Was like entrepreneurship. We're just entrepreneurs. Yeah. We, we, we wanted to, you know, and when I, what I thought that meant was like you are, you created things, like you innovated things. You, you, you made things that people had never seen before. Yep. I've since learned and grown since I was a kid that that's not necessarily what an entrepreneur is at all. Right. However, like an inventor is kind of what I saw that being. And this product is something that I, I'm blown away that we, we get to kind of claim it. Yeah. Um, but this is truly the first world's first traditional bow mount for self filming with your cell phone. It's a magnetic recovery aid that you can mount to your traditional bow that is going to allow you to watch your shots back. It gives you dual view so you can turn it around, face your, you know, your, your face so you can see your facial Shooter. expression after the shot, or you can turn it around. And this has been a couple of year project. It's been, it's been something in the back of my mind for a long time. We've talked to a lot of people at shows and it, it looks a lot simpler than it is. Oh, it looks like it's just, yeah. yeah. But I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to get ready to kind of dive into the geometry of it, and you're going to help me with that. Yeah. But um, it if you think about a traditional bow hunter, you have a it, – it's one of the most simple, meaning it's a bow and a string. It's a, it's a piece of wood bent, and it's a string connecting the ends. Like it's a simple setup versus a compound bow where it's yeah. all this cam and geometry and that's simple it. in the amount of componentry that yeah. makes it up. But when you want to become a lethal hunter with a traditional or a long bow or a self bow, um you it requires practice. Like even more so, you know, I think most people would agree with me, it more so than a compound bow, right? Yeah, I mean um what, what do they call it? You you shoot off of instinct. Instinct, yeah. And, and like the shot process is so shooter specific in terms of like, um, like the process and your anchor point and how you cant the bow and how you grip the bow. Like all of it is very different from shooting a compound bow. Yeah, hundred percent. Um the key that what you just said is the cant. Mm -hmm. So if you have no idea what that is, if you picture, if you, if you picture you have a bow in your left hand, let's say your right hand shooter, you have a bow in your left hand, you're holding the grip and you're holding it straight up and down. Yep. So the top of the limb is facing straight up and the bottom limb is facing the ground. If you were to turn your whole wrist to the right, you now have the top, Yep. Facing to the right, kind of towards your like two, three o'clock, and the bottom's kind of facing down towards like what? That's ten o'clock, something like that. That's the cant. So that angle, and every shooter has a slightly different cant, um, and that's hard to account for when making a product that's going to be bottom. To the <laughs> that has to be facing straight up and down. Mm-hmm. So when we started like kind of thinking about this. It's like, well, how in the heck are we going to do that? Like, <laughs> how yeah. can you make a product that's going to account for and adjust for everybody's, you know, different angle of shot? Not only do you have right-hand shooters, you also have left-hand shooters. So it's like with our compound bow mount, our bread and butter, the Mag Pro Plus that goes on a compound bow, that's like pretty universal. Well, yeah, in, in general, you're you're trying to keep your bow perfectly vertical. Exactly. It's pretty universal. Like most... Most bows are very similar, you know, like obviously you can go to lengths and lengths to customize your bow. But anyway, that was a huge challenge. Like up front, we knew that was going to be tough. So we kind of went to the drawing board. I kind of had this idea. We kind of had this idea of like, maybe it's like a, you know, 
I, I think our first prototype is actually right over here. Yeah. And it was a piece of aluminum is what we started with. And, and the reason that I wanted to use aluminum is because I thought that you could bend it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody buy to it. Customize it. To yep. You. Yeah. Somebody buy it and they'd just be like, Whoosh. oh, that's where I'm looking at. Whoosh. Push it back. Oh, that right. And they could just like fine tune their system. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking that we'd remove a bolt from, from the limb for a, a recurve bow and they could just thread it right through and that would hold the bracket on. Right. You remember this? Yeah, I do. And I wrapped the base with hockey tape as of like a rough, rough, rough prototype. And I thought that that would be, I thought that that would be the answer. Like I thought that would be like the most rigid, it would go on majority of bows. It wouldn't go on long bows real well because there's no bolt that hold, you know, to hold the limbs on. But I thought that that would be the the keys, like customizable. I mean, you just bend it. <laughs> yeah, I that didn't work. It didn't. It didn't work at all. It was very sloppy. The the film was not good. It wasn't rigid enough. It wasn't rigid. It, it just it was not legit. Like it wasn't something I was going to use personally, and I didn't I didn't want to I didn't want to put that out. It did work. Like you could put yeah. the phone on and it would hold, but the film, which wasn't wasn't what we wanted. So we kind of we shifted gears, and what we did, if you can see this in my hand. I'm gonna pull this rubber strap off. So this is kind of like our finalized mount. And if you steel. can kind of see, yep, it's steel. What is what what exactly is it? 1008, 1010 carbon, just carbon steel. So the the geometry of it is like, I don't know how many times we had to go back and forth on this. So what we did is the majority of so if you consider the cant of somebody and and the cant from me to you to the next guy, and maybe even you from one shot to the next, the cant is going to vary slightly, mm -hmm. right? So the majority of the cant is made up for by the bends in the product. Yep. And then beyond that, the way that it mounts to the bow allows adjustability to hone it in perfectly specific to the shooter. But most of the accommodation for the cant is is dealt with by the bends in the product. Correct. And I, I will say, like, there is going to be some, like, you may still want to, I don't even know if I like saying this, but, like, you may need to bend it slightly to get exactly, if, you, if you're, if you like, really picky and you want, like, when you, well, when you, you shoot. Once you buy the product, do what you want with it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've, I've done this a couple of times, um, specifically on this, like, depending on the, the curve of your limb, if it's yeah. very straight, if your limb's very straight up and down a stick bow, like a, a long bow is going to be a lot more straight mm. versus a recurve where it's like really like it's built in to have that big curve. You're going to have slightly, you know, your, your, whatever you're aiming at is going to be higher or lower in your actual film. Right. Um, depending are some of you guys going to have an easy time having it be right in the middle. Absolutely. But there might be just a slight tweak you need to make, not even a big deal at all. But the geometry of this is not just like willy nilly. That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah, it's by design. It's by design. Yeah. Um, using our same magnetic platform, um, this is this is the same magnet on all of our products. It's yep. really strong, proven, tested, hold power, and it's gonna it's gonna grab your phone really nicely. Um, one thing I did want to say about how it actually mounts to the bow. This yep. is probably the most important part. Um, so there's a there's a piece of, of tubing that is over top of the piece that is going to actually be touching your riser. So it's not going to mar yep. and, you know, take paint off or, or ruin your bow. So th that's protected by a rubber coating. And then we have this strap here, and it, it's kind of like a loop with the holes, like a like a belt buckle, basically. And that's exactly designed to go on the very bottom of this. I'm putting it on. And so it kind of looks something like that. It just goes right on the bottom. And there's a stud that's basically pressed into mm -hmm. the arm of the product. And that allows you to put it on the front of your, your riser. You wrap this around your limb. And then you take a couple of these holes as you kind of wrap it around and stick it through that stud. Yep. And that's what essentially holds it onto the front of your bow. So as Devin was kind of alluding to, you can, based on your cant, once this is mounted, you can you can kind of pull it and pivot push it. it and pivot it yeah. to get 
just exactly dialed in. Yeah. And so all this, all this being said, it works really well. And that's what I'm like really most excited about is that the footage is, it's good. It's really good. Really good. It's cool because I think back to when we launched the first product and, you know, in terms of the evolution of the company, you and I would always say like, well, what are we going to do next? Like we got to have product three, four, five, yeah. six in mind. And from the beginning, we've not only said it to each other, but we, I think we've been pretty outspoken about it. We're going to be very intentional with listening to people, taking those data points and making products that people say they want to buy. And so we had a lot of people that are like, well, do you make one for a trad bow? What about my buddy that shoots a trad bow? Do you guys have one for a trad bow? And, and you hear that enough times and it's like, well, maybe there's a, a market here that's good. Because if six people say it to you and nobody ever says it, well, there's a lot of time and development and work that goes into developing a product. If we're going to sell six of them, does it make sense? I don't know. So, but, but in general, the way that we developed the one for the crossbow and, you know, many of our other SKUs came from feedback and that's exactly what happened here. We had enough people say, I really like the idea of your product, but I shoot a trad bow. Mm -hmm. And that became a theme from talking to enough people at shows that it's like, man, we got to give these people something. I, I think trad, trad bow hunting is, I think it's kind of trending. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people, me included, I, you like to do things the hardest way. Mm -hmm. Just to say you did it, to, to, to understand the improvements in technology, to truly to, to truly understand how good a compound bow is, you got to shoot a trad bow. I mean, it's just, it's something that I, I've, I wish I did more of. And unfortunately, it, I've, traditional bow hunting is like, you got to get in tight, you got to get in close, and like your, your opportunities to actually harvest go down. They just do. Right. Um, but I, I think that this is going to just be, add such a flavor to traditional bow hunting. I, I really do. I, I think that this can, this can be a, a, an extreme tool because you think about, um, you know, the guys that are really in traditional bow hunting, like they're using cedar shafts. They're using like, you're typically dealing with less penetration typically in terms of the recovery process. What, what an idea. Like, that's, this is such a cool thing. That's what I wanted to touch on is um, my perception of of traditional bow hunters is that it, it's, and I'm not a traditional bow hunter, um, is that it, it tends to be the purists, the guys that are in it for the purity of hunting with a stick and a string. The way it got intended. Yeah. And so, you know, you could argue that these that demographic isn't going to be really interested in putting their cell phone on their super peer bow. But you spoke to how basically how much more difficult it can be to hunt with a trad bow. And I think the recovery piece is why it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like if somebody, we all have cell phones, 99% of us are going into the woods with them anyway. If you can put it on your trad bow, and it's going to increase your odds of recovering that animal. Why would you not do it? And like like you said, it, it's it's this it's this massive accomplishment to say that you harvested something with a trad bow. And if this product is going to give you a better chance of recovering that animal once you've made a shot on it, why wouldn't you do it? I I do think the purest of the pure, like they they do like traditional bow hunting, but I also think hunting is kind of like this bragging thing. You know what I mean? In the same way, like people when they shoot a when they shoot a 150 inch buck with a trad bow, those guys are not just like hushing hushing. They're they're like they won't check this it. out. Yeah. So I kind of like them. Devil's advocating you a little bit, but yeah. Well, it becomes a tool to share that and brag about it. It also is a tool to help you find it. E I mean, not even necessarily bragging, but just to like have that. Right. Like, to relive the, the hunt. Yeah, like those moments. I mean, there's just not a lot of them, especially with a trad. I mean, I haven't, I'll be honest with you. I've gone out hunting with a traditional bow like a couple of times. Mm -hmm. But do I love shooting it? I, I shoot it, you know, throughout my my progression of, you know, the summertime leading into the hunting season. I often will shoot this to remind myself when I'm having a bad day on my compound bow, like, like, 
this is doable. Like you can you right. can put the pin where it, where it needs to go. Like you're not trying to just traditionally you're you're counting on your instincts, instincts your muscle yeah. memory, and everything about it to to get the air where it needs to go. And sometimes it helps me to reset. But um, it's a huge goal of mine now to like this weekend. I think I'm gonna go out with the trad bow with this mount right here and try and shoot a doe, shoot a doe or something. Cool. Like I got a tag. Um, and my God, we got does running around. Like we got plenty of them. So world's first traditional bow mount. It's available now. Magnetic self filming recovery tool. You can get, uh, we, I did briefly mention it, but like that, that angle where you turn it around. That's cool. Oh boy. Is it cool? I think we're going to be coming out with some videos here pretty soon that have that angle shown in it. Yeah, we will. I'm wondering, do we want to uh, do we want to also flex the fact that this is this is made in Jackson, Michigan? Yeah. As all of our products are, I think that we've we've found some people recently who have been surprised. Uh, or not all of our products are made. Sorry, uh, mo- like the Mag Pro stuff is is all made here in in Jackson. Yeah, it's not sourced out from someplace in China. We're not we're not doing that. This is developed, yeah, and created with. I think that people can tell by watching you guys with love and care, in Jackson, freaking Michigan. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Amen. It's it's. It's not the easiest thing when you're developing, and that's something I'm I'm personally really proud of, and I I don't mind talking about it. Well, and that's like like Trev said, it's not it's not that we don't source some things or or certain products or whatever, but at the end of the day, like the design and the intention and where everything starts is here, and we're manufacturing a lot of the components here, and we're assembling all of them here, and they ship from our hands in this facility here, um, and there's just a lot of care that goes into that, so. Um, I think I think that comes across. Yeah. So that being said, mm-hmm. these will start shipping January 1. Right. But they're available for pre-order now. They are available on the website for $50 on a pre-order basis. So the Trad Pro. The Trad Pro. Did we say that? No. This is the Trad Pro. <laughs> this is the Trad Pro. We never said that. Never. Yeah. <laughs> well... So we have the FH1, we have the Trad Pro, and we are going to be releasing yet another new product, but we're not going to talk about that today. That's going to be coming soon, uh, but that's that's coming. I, I don't know how many companies do this. They just come at you all in, in the beginning of the year, boom, boom, boom. You know what I mean? It ain't easy. You know what I mean? It's just not, Yeah. but it's fun, man. I, I, I really want some feedback. Like if you're listening to this and you know somebody who shoots, shoots a trad bow, let them know. Let them know. I, I want to I start getting these in the hands of people um, and like hearing the feedback. We've obviously done our due diligence, had a handful of people test these for us, go on hunts with them, um, and I'm, I'm jacked about it. So I think that's it for today. We're going to keep it short and sweet. PaintedArrowOutdoors.com. Guys, thank you so much for listening along, and we will catch you on the next episode. See ya.